All right, let's talk some player movement. Let's talk some rumors. Neither one of you have anything interesting to tell the podcast, right? Nope. Yeah, same Nobody old. Yeah, same old, same old. Um, <laughs> but we might have someone joining Ezra here in a little bit that might have something interesting to tell us. So I'm very curious to see if he will uh, spill the beans, if you will. Uh, hey, that's tr- that, that's Tristan. Ta- <laughs> that's, that's that's Tristan Tanner. Tristan Tanner is uh, leaving Latitude 64. He made a post on Instagram about it. Again, kind of kind of Chandler Kramer esque. He he did not ask his followers where he should go. That would that would be the big difference. But there wasn't a hey, I'm leaving Latitude. I'm going with this person. And that is kind of a theme that we are seeing this off season. It seems like there are more people that can't get the numbers right, or something happens to where maybe um, the manufacturer is like, Hey, we, we can't do the same thing as we did last year. And so people are leaving and trying to find something else. We've seen a lot of people announce that they're leaving. We have not seen a lot of people announce where they're going. So one that we did see though, Jakob, Jakob Simrod, did resign with Latitude 64. Uh, we had Ben Calloway resign with Latitude uh, with no, excuse me, with, oh. di- with Discraft resigned with Discraft. Uh, we have Chandler Fry, who this was a kind of a crazy one when I saw this because Chandler Fry, I really think of Discraft when I think of Chandler. So him leaving Discraft is is a crazy thing. I don't know uh. where he'll I don't know where he'll end up, but. He announces that he is leaving Discraft. We have Paige, Sh- Paige Shu resigning with Discraft. We have we we called this a while ago. Again, I'll say this to um, anyone that uh, missed last podcast. Ricky came out and was talking about how hey we shouldn't leak what people are saying and whatnot. Emerson Keith was like telling people that he was leaving Lone Star. And then those people started telling other people and the word got around. So we kind of knew this was happening, but Emerson Keith did announce officially on his Instagram that he is leaving Lone Star. Uh, I think think, I think that was this week. I think that was this week. I don't I don't know exactly Exactly. if it was today or not. Um, Then you have Hannah. I always mispronounce her last name. Do you guys know how to pronounce Hoon? Hoon. That's what I've always heard. It's great to me. I mean, attempt it. Okay. (laughs) Hannah Hun is leaving West Side. So all those announcements, we either had people leaving or we had people re-signing. We never got anyone going somewhere else yet. And the big one that we're all waiting for is Eagle McMahon. And if you guys didn't have your 10, uh, 10 cap on last week for my conspiracy theory on Eagle, where I basically said he's retiring from disc golf and is going to try to be a professional uh, Kendama, Kendama, Kendama player. Yeah. Um, I've got a new thought this week. I have a new thought. And this was, this was like a meme I saw posted somewhere. So that kind of got my head spinning and I was like, this actually makes a lot of sense. So you have MVP poster boy, a po- poster boy, James Conrad. Okay. Those are the discs that have the black rims. You have Axiom poster boy, Simon Lazat. Those are the discs that have colored rims. Streamline, not an overmold also owned by MVP. This is all three of these different companies are all, or, you know, are all under the same umbrella. There's no one for streamline. Mm. Could we see Eagle fitting into string streamline? And now you've got the three headed dragon, James Conrad, Simon Lazat, Eagle McMahon, all promoting different lines of MVP discs. Thoughts boys. It's a good take. I feel like it's, I feel like that's more likely than him being a Kendama player, but <laughs> what do I know? Well, this uh, is not a conspiracy theory. The last one was a conspiracy theory. Hey, just because it's conspiracy theory does not mean that it's not true. <laughs> that is true. Right? Just, hey, just saying. One thing I'll say, I think this is kind of funny. If that does end up happening, I think it'll be kind of a 
funny situation for Simon because, uh, you know, his whole big thing was, hey, I want a fresh start. I want something new. I want all these things going on. And he's gotten all that stuff. And it may be other than this, but like one of those things I think is like, it's been the crush boys for so long, you know, him and Eagle, you know, playing together. And maybe his whole point was like, hey, I want, I want a fresh start and like, you know, something different than that. And then MVP <laughs> signs him on and then boom, Simon's like, come on guys. Like, you're just going to do me like that right back to the same thing. Well, I, I think, know. I mean, I think with how much money MVP <laughs> is paying Simon and how much money Simon is making MVP, I, I, I think he probably would have some sort of relationship with them on like, Hey, at, at the end of the day, MVP is going to do what MVP is, is best suited for them. But I don't think they would probably bring someone on that he was like super anti having. But where I'll disagree with you there is because I think if Simon can be the Axiom guy, that is a little bit of a separation where Dismania, everything was Dismania. Good and this to, this to me feels almost kind of like Toyota and Lexus, right? Two people, okay, right. one guy sponsored by Toyota, one guy sponsored by Lexus. The same person is writing the checks for both, but to the outside world, the perspective, it looks different. And I'm wondering, do you guys see other manufacturers maybe going this route of like having mm -hmm. different people for different lines? Well, we've also seen the similar thing with um, Trilogy. Um, yes, it's it's hard to like discount that they've had the, that same thing going for a long time, and it's not quite at the extent that you're talking about because all three you know companies are defined and have multiple star players rather than just that one guy that's the face of it. But you know I could see it going that way if you had like you know Matteo Westside, you know Ricky on what's he on DD uh, right now dynamic yeah. You know I I could see him doing that kind of thing where they get another guy to be their number one you know latitude you know, whoever it is. I, I don't know I think, anything. I so. think Latitude has well, a lot of the European players. Right. Well, now that's all House of Disc anyway, right? So isn't right. all not those two companies this like kind of intertwined with Disc Mania and maybe like Castaplast and a few other ones as well? Yeah, I think... So I, think, that, I don't know if that changes I, things. Well, I think prior, the, the trilogy was kind of intertwined because like some were making Disc for one another, but they yeah. were they were separate, you right? Um, I, I believe... If you guys are familiar with Hooligan Disc, they announced that they aren't going to have Lone Star make their disc anymore, right? So mm -hmm. in that situation, like Axiom can't just be like, I we don't want MVP making our disc anymore. Like MVP created Axiom, MVP created Streamline, where oh, yeah. these three were kind of separate, but then someone bought them out. So now they're kind of back in this the same world. So right. I I'm just wondering for like the, the big question here is more for like Innova and Discraft, right? right? These are like so the two talking. the two big dogs, and there's the balloons. Um, those are the two big <laughs> dogs. Uh, do we see something? <laughs> wait, wait! I'll give you this one. Let me give you this one. This is my favorite. Cool. This is oh. this is the fireworks. Can you do that too? So what you're saying is no, like, like you're on Innova Android. comes out with uh, another company that's like Halo. So like all their Halo plastic becomes, you know, one company. And then they've also got Innova on another company and Something. they've created two like separate entities where they could have a, a person at the top of one and the other. Like, yeah. Like what if Discraft was just like, Hey, Discraft is going to be ESP and Z like that is Discraft. And then mm -hmm. they, cr they create a new line and this new line is this plastic and they maybe change the molds a little bit. Like I, I, uh, or they I'm go. Just, I'm just we've wondering. We've got Nick Beast, and we've got Dark Horse plastic. Oh. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that if that maybe is a play because we've all we've always talked about that of like there is this kind of cannibalize cannibal. That's such a hard freaking word for me to say. Cannibalize <laughs> cannibalization. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm go. adding. You got I think it. I'm, I think I added a syllable, but there is some of that at a certain point. Uh, where you 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 have a team so much of where hey buy my disc 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 and that one person can only buy so much it's like well what if you were able to separate that to where now these guys are kind of separated a little bit these guys are separated a little bit now you can kind of be like oh well like I I got to get this from over here but then I also got to get this from over here it's a little bit easier I think but. I mean, I yeah. think Discraft and Innova are still the big boys, so I, I think they the way they're going is probably the way that the others will probably follow, or maybe not. 
at one point, Blockbuster was the big boy. Let's not forget. I think there is always going to be that that competition, though, even if you do separate stuff out. Like, I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, th I, think, I think there's always going to be that. So even if you're on the same team as somebody, there's going to be some cannibalization. And if you're on a different team, like they'll, they'll still, it's still like a fan base and a fan base. And so trying to kind of, I guess, compete for dollars, as bad as that sound, but sounds. But um, I think it's also interesting. Discraft kind of has DGA. DGA under its wing, not quite the same thing as having like a different type of disc because it's it's all you know ESP or Z or whatever it is. But Innova kind of got away from that since they used to have Disc Mania, I believe. And now does does Innova even have? I guess does Innova make they just what, have Infinite um, Disc Millennium. Millennium, Millennium. Yeah. and yes. I think they do make okay. Infinite Disc as well. I do think so. Yes. Okay. So that yeah. that that's the same relationship as like. This crap with DGA or Lone Star with Hooligan last year, of where at one point, you know, DGA can just say we're done and we, we're going to make our discs ourselves. Or um, now, granted, I don't know who would own the molds and all that. That's a that's a completely different, you know, out of my realm. But yeah. I, I thought this would be kind of the first time we saw this where someone strategically, you know, they brought James Conrad, then they brought Simon Lazat. And then they bring Eagle, like they strategically, it almost kind of like they plan this out of the, this is how we're kind of building our team. And uh, I'm just, I'm curious as to see if others will follow suit. They probably planned out the holy shot too. They were like, hey man, you've just <laughs> got to like throw in for the best shot ever thrown in the history of disc golf. This and that'll great. We'll have enough <laughs> money. You can have the fans know the scripts, dude. Come on. Yeah. We'll have enough yeah, money to go out and go out and sign Simon. This would be great. This would be great. So, um, do, do, do Simon and James, or I guess any of the MVP guys really promote the streamlined discs at all? Or is it more just the, the, the MVP discs and the Axiom discs? I think, I think time, I, I think Simon's time-lapse is streamlined. Okay. Yes. Could be. I don't really follow that. But... I, I, I believe it is. So I, I, I'm sure, I'm sure there's no, uh, there's no rim on the, on his, I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, I think. Well, then if you streamlined, then that doesn't leave room for. Then where's Eagle? What's Eagle gonna throw? Well, I think. I think there is some like obviously a little bit of like, hey, we're over here, we're over here. People yeah. are saying no, it's Axiom. Okay, so uh, yeah, I guess. I guess everything is Axiom for Simon. Um, okay. I, I was. I was wrong on that. Oh, it. It is. It is like. It is colored. We threw it. I think, at, yeah, uh, I think it's multicolored. Yeah, we threw it at um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is it is Axiom. Yeah, we threw it at um. Which we call it? At MVP, in that video. That that's when he like we literally we saw oh, him right. throw it for like the first we time on hole one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll we'll see kind of how this works out and how it plays out. It'll be very interesting to kind of. I mean, again, this is all speculation. We don't know where Eagle's going, but you know, if we're lo if you're looking at what Dismania has been doing the last few weeks, it really seems like they're kind of, hey, we've got Eagle for a few more weeks here. Let's try to get as much out of him as possible. That's what it kind of seems like. Um, they're really the only ones that you know, like Discraft's not really reaching out to us to be like, hey, we need you guys to start promoting this video and do this and do. They're not really like crunching us on a timeline right now where it seems like Eagle's putting out a lot of stuff for them. So um, I think, he, I think they just said something about the P2 today. I think he's in a video talking about the P2. Yeah. Oh, I man? Yeah. I was going to touch on two things. These are a little while back, but I thought they were kind of fun to say. Uh, the first one is you're talking about how like uh, players are all announcing where the, how they're moving, but not like where they're going. And I think that that's just a really good like marketing thing where like at the end of the season, you know, in December, you'll announce, hey, I'm leaving this team. And then, you know, January 1st, you're going to see tons of people being like fresh year, fresh me. Here's my new start at this company. Do you so think I that's think what's that, happening here, though? I, I do. Um, I think a lot. I would be surprised if you had some of these players leaving their company and just saying they're leaving before having anything going you know, somewhere else. Well, that, that would well, surprise me. Well, qu well, question: If if this if this craft would have came to you this off season and said, "Hey, Aaron, listen, we love what we're, you're doing, um, but you know, we're just not able to give you the same deal next year as what you have now. You know, we're going to be able to only 
pay, we're gonna have to pay you 10% less. Uh, we're not gonna do as many runs for you, but we still want you on board. Are you taking that or are you saying like, I'm gonna risk it and see what else is out there? So in this hypothetical situation, I would probably say to Discraft, you know, this is what you wanna hear is, you know, I, I would prefer to part ways, I'm gonna go somewhere else. That's what I tell Discraft. But then I'm not gonna post anything until I have a company that is like, hey, we want you here. And as now, soon as somebody- if, What if the company posts it? Now, if oh, the company- okay. That's the a little different. But if the company posts it, is that kind of lead us to believe that they were just told the person we're not interested in re-signing you at all? Right? Because like, like you just said, right. if you were like, hey, I don't, I'm not gonna re-sign with you guys, I'm gonna go elsewhere. You're saying like, I'm not gonna make a post until I know what's going on. Yeah, that, but that, that's if, kind of the world I live in. But if you walked, yeah, if you walked into Discraft and be like, "All right, I'm ready for renegotiations. Uh, what are we doing?" and they're like, "Yeah, we're we're not interested." You're not gonna go and being like, "Guys, I'm leaving Discraft. I'm out." Right? You're probably gonna like be like, "Crap, I need to figure out where I'm going." So if the company right. posts, if the company makes a post being like, "Hey, we're sad to see Gooseman go. He was awesome on the team." Does that lead us to believe like? It was more on the company side and not on the player side. That's an, it. You just brought that up. I never even thought about that. It's a good point. I don't think I've ever seen a company do that. I think that anytime I've seen a company say, hey, we're so sorry to see so-and-so go, it's after the player has already come out with the same post. And I think so many times mm. you'll see that. Um, I think, I, you know what I mean? Where like someone will post like, hey, like Paul, he'll be like, hey, I'm leaving Innova. You know, so sorry. We've had some great memories. And then right after he posts that, Innova will come back and be like, thank you so much for being on our team. You know, we've got tons of respect for you. So I, I've never actually seen the company go first. But then again, I don't keep track of a lot of things. So it yeah, may happen all the time. It's, it's tough to know exactly what who posts first. But I'm saying I'm wondering if, if there are people out there. We have a, a lot of people that listen to this podcast. Let's do some investigating. Go look around and see who's posting first. What's happening? Is someone having to post because someone else posted? That would be kind of I an interesting most, way. I think most of the time it probably is like the correct order of events. But I, didn't uh, something happen with Matty O like two years ago when he went to West Side? West Side? Well, like I think yes. maybe Prodigy released something like way too soon and people got pissed off and stuff. So I think it does happen. And then I, 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 I don't know. I guess I would assume that as far as people leaving sponsorships now, I think it probably happens both ways. Well, sometimes it's the playoff saying this isn't going to work for me. And sometimes it's the company just saying, listen, we can't afford you anymore. Like, I, honestly, I think the economy is kind of tough right now for, for companies and disc golf's not maybe growing as fast as it was two years ago. And so those, those are some setbacks. So it's kind of a tough, kind of a tough season for transferring sponsorships. I would say it's never like one side or the other. Um, I think it's the that mutual, right. it's a contract, you know? So it's like if Discraft came to yep. me and said, hey, you know, we can't pay you any money, but we'll put you back on a structure where we'll, you know, we'll pay your entry fees and give you bonuses if you win tournaments, you know, 100 allotment for the year. Then I would be like, hey, I can't do that. I got to go find somewhere else. So at the end of the day, you know, Discraft's offering me less and I want more and that just doesn't match up. So then I would go somewhere else. But, you know, the same thing could be true on the other end where I'm like, hey, I won, you know, three tournaments last year. You need to pay me more. And they're like, hey, we can't afford to pay you any more, but we'll give you the exact same salary as last year. Again, I might go somewhere else. But it, to me, it's, it's the, the mutual, you know, it's it's contract, you know, between two it's different two entities. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, I kind of I kind of had this idea that some of these contracts for certain players were a little bit maybe inflated for what their value actually was. And these companies at that time, like any, you put anyone's name on a disc and it was selling. And so mm -hmm. maybe there was this idea a little bit of like, holy cow, we've got, let's sign this guy, let's sign this guy. And now I think we're starting to see a little bit more of, wait a second, this is actually what makes sense. And so there might be some kind of realization of where if you're like the 20th guy in the world and you know what the 19th guy in the world is making, and uh, but he signed their contract a few years ago, and you're like, well, I'm, I'm going to go find that. And you go out there, mm -hmm. you're like, it, it might not be out there anymore. Like there might be yep. a little bit of a, we're kind of falling back into where we're at. So it'll be interesting to kind of see. Um, Ezra, definitely let us know when Tristan comes in 
if he if he has anything yeah, to we, say. I, we hype him up. He's gonna feel pressure to. Well, I guess he's probably not watching this. He like he probably doesn't know, but he's he's gonna like no, feel pressure no to idea. make an announcement. He has no. <laughs> I, I got, I got something to say about Tristan too. Um, I, I think this is kind of interesting. Um, I'm surprised he's leading latitude myself um, because I played with Tristan in Colorado. And I remember this season that he played where he went from like an 880 player to a 980 player in one year and the amount of work he put in and he only threw latitude and like he posted every single tournament. He, he was like the most committed person I've ever seen at 880 that it's just like, I am going to get sponsored by Latitude, and it's going to be that company, and I'm going to make it happen. And he grinded hard all year long, and I think he went on tour the very following year, sponsored by Latitude. So um, it, it was an interesting thing, because like, I saw that whole progress of him like working to like get that sponsorship, and it was exactly what he wanted, You know, the company he was looking for, and all the work he put in. And so it, it's interesting to see him make that post of he's, he's moving away from it. But I, I guess everybody's got their... Got it, well, you know, everything well, what changes. If, again, what if this was like Latitude's decision of like, hey, we're, you know, House of Disc being like, hey, we want Latitude to be more of our international brand, right? Mm -hmm. We're going right. to we're gonna be signing more. But I mean, what if Discraft, Aaron, was like, hey, everyone under six feet, we're not signing anymore. What would, hap <laughs> what would happen to you? Hey, man, I'm six <laughs> feet tall. Like, what, what would happen to you? Let me some slack, bro. <laughs> oh, it was the balloons. <laughs> 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 Oh uh, yeah. So, so yeah, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was this thing of where he, and maybe we'll see him land with the dynamic disc or land with the West side, someone, or who knows, like you said, Ezra, this is on the, on the, uh, still under there. Cast to is still under there. Um, who knows? We'll kind of see, see how it yeah, all I wonder that plays too, out. As far as like, if, if, if the house, the disc wants to shift players around, within their own kind of ecosystem or if you get right. cut from one team they don't want you on any team at all you know and i, I think ideally for for most of us we would like to stay with one sponsor throughout the entire career i think that's probably the ideal situation but unfortunately sometimes stuff just falls apart and it's not a, not necessarily anything to fear us about it it's just you know sometimes parting ways is the only uh good option Right. As far as the shifting people around too, it would be really interesting if like Eagle went to MVP and then they bumped, you know, Conrad over to Streamline. If they were just like, hey, we're just going to mm. switch things up a little bit, you know, like put our top guy at a different company where it's like a better fit, where all three players are right where they, you know, need to be with their discs. I don't know. Yeah. Right.